So, got another question? Yeah. Um, what is your favorite memory or story for yours about Tom Beecher or Pa? There's so many. He was an incredibly wonderful father. But he was just such a good man. I don't, I never heard anybody say anything bad about my dad. I'll oh. tell you just a few stories about how he raised us growing up. You know, we were, first of all, you got to remember, his wife died when he had six children and the oldest was 13. So he had plenty to do. It's not unlike your grandpa, mm -hmm. with your grandma too. There were five kids there. So he had all that responsibility. He had the responsibility of running the business every day mm -hmm. while his older brother was out cutting the orders and all. So he was very busy doing that. But he still always had time to do things for other people. He always was concerned about the neighbors. One of my favorite stories is we went to the grammar school. We lived in, on Woodward Avenue in Buffalo right in the same block as the church, St. Mark's, and the school we went to. So we lived, we just had to go to the corner to get to school in the morning, which was very nice. Uh, and we were taught by nuns. But the nuns didn't live there. They lived a couple of miles away. And every Sunday morning, Pa would get up and he would get us all organized. I gotta tell you about that too. But then he would drive his big Cadillac up He'd get the nuns who were our teachers. He'd bring them back to church so that they could supervise us in church. And then he would load them all back in his car and he'd take them back. Now, how did he used to get us ready for church on when the, this was when there were the six of us and he didn't have them. His wife wasn't there anymore. Every Saturday night, everybody got a bath. Now, we lived in a, in a nice house, but not like the houses were people live today that are much bigger and more bathrooms and all that sort of thing. So we had one bathroom and we would take turns starting with the youngest and everybody would get their bath and then after everybody got their bath, you know we didn't have television, this was before television so we didn't have, we couldn't watch television, we would either read, the older kids would read stories to the younger kids and then he would shine all our shoes. So he had the six of us plus his own. That's seven. So that's 14 shoes he would shine and they would all be lined up. So when we went out to church on Sunday morning, we always looked like a family that was organized and prepared. We all had our shoes shined and we were all dressed up and we all went to church. Now, for a little while after my mom died, his sister Elizabeth came and lived with us. Elizabeth was a famous person in the family. She was my father's older sister and she had never married. Uh, she married later in life to a wonderful man, but at this point she wasn't married, so she moved, she gave up her career, and she moved in for about two years and lived with us to help us get stabilized. And she knew we were sad about losing our mother, but she was very good. Her theory for that is work hard. So she always had us, and that's how I learned to cook. That's been my hobby ever since she taught me to cook. She said, if you're busy cooking, you can't be sad. So, so uh, and she was really a wonderful woman to us. And then when, when my father, Pa, found his new bride, then she came and lived with us, obviously, and they had three more kids, and, and we had a wonderful life then. But by then, things were a little bit easier. We had you know, two parents in the house, and some of us were older, and we were going off to college and law school and all. So, but to get back to some favorite memories of Pa, certainly the Saturday night ritual, uh, as we went, uh, uh, as we got ready for church, Sunday morning, then after, we would go back to the house, because we, we lived in the same block. He would take the nuns back, and then he would come back, and he always cooked a great big breakfast on Sunday morning for everybody. And it was always fried eggs, or scrambled eggs, and bacon, and toast, and sweet rolls, and sausages. And that would be sort of a really big deal, and we'd all sit around and, and talk and everything. We had, a, we had a good arrangement, especially as the a new three kids came along. The oldest was always paired with the youngest, and this was his idea, because he was the boss of the house. But, like for doing dishes, I always did dishes with my sister Barbara, because I was the oldest and she was the youngest. And then your dad would have done dishes with John. That must have been it. I don't think John did many of the dishes. I, that's why your, why your grandpa, not your dad, but your grandpa is such a good, such a good cleaner. I think he probably had a two at all. I don't imagine John did a lot of cleaning with him. So, uh, the other, one of the other things that I remember that he did to, to show his what a kind and generous man he was, that he had friends, the sisters who taught at our school, he, he became friends with many of them. In fact, when my mom was sick, sometimes they would come down and help clean our house and all. But um, he would hear about poor families from them. And every Christmas, he would get the names and he would get the ages of all their kids. 
and he would shop for those kids like he shopped for us. And he would get, then he would get, go to the grocery store and he'd like get turkey and all kinds of food and everything. And then we would pack all that in our car and we would take it over and we would give it to the poor family. Because he wanted us to see that everybody didn't have as nice a life as we did, even though, uh, you know, we didn't have a real great life. I mean, it was a wonderful life. It's just what we were, we were certainly not what you would call rich, uh, but, but we had a wonderful life. So those are the kind of things. He was always incredibly generous. I don't think I ever asked him for anything he didn't do, even though now that I think of it, I shouldn't have asked. I mean, he was so helpful in, in uh, like, going to any school you wanted to go to. I don't know how he ever paid the tuition. He had so many kids to put through school, but he never said no. Anywhere she, I want to go to Holy Cross, go to Holy Cross. I want to go to law school, go to law school. And he did that for all of us. It wasn't just me. So he, those are the things that I remember about him. He was a great influence on life. Just knew if he did it, it was the right thing to do. I, he didn't do things that weren't the right thing to do. So, and he was, uh, he had only a high school education. He had never gone to college. So that is my best, recoll some of my best recollections. Um, no. Oh, okay. And what are some favorite what are some favorite memories about family members from your generation as a child? Oh, so this would be my my cousins and my brothers and sisters. Well, I the ones I just told you about are for my brothers and sisters certainly our Saturdays together and our playing together and you, you know you made a lot of your own fun you didn't have TV you didn't have a lot of things like that so we had a big backyard and it was always the center of activity for the neighborhood so we always uh, had lots of kids over and there was always games being played and there was always baseball team we had enough for a baseball team of our own we had nine so uh, soccer wasn't a big deal back then so we didn't we didn't really play soccer baseball was probably the big one we did a lot of digging in the backyard we rearranged the backyard many times we had forts and soldiers and all kinds of things we moved around. Uh, so, but we also probably, um, what's our time limit, do you know? What's our time limit? 9.30. Okay, well I'll just wrap up then with the story about the cousins, because I think that's important, because we worked so hard to have you cousins all spend time together. Um, the cousins in those days spent a lot of time together in the summer. It was harder to get around, so we didn't see quite as much of one another during the, 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 uh, the school year as, as you probably do now. Minute sections. So I'll just tell you one story about the cousins, and then I think we're then I think we're done. Um, so the summer we had a we had the most wonderful summers because on Pa's side, his mom, who was still alive and a wonderful, wonderful woman, who uh, died when she was in her 80s. And um, my father's sister Mary, who would be Tommy Ryan's mom, rented places at a, a summer colony on Canada called Shirkston. And it was very simple. We had little cottages. We weren't really on the beach. We had to walk about a half a mile to the beach. But um, we had uh, no hot water. We just had one faucet inside for cold water. There was no indoor bathroom. You had to go outside to the bathroom. It was very, very simple. But we had so much. You took your shoes off when you got there at the beginning of the summer. Except to go to Mass on Sunday. You didn't put your shoes back on. Everybody just ran around bare feet. There was just a lot of grass and all. But we could walk on a path through to a beautiful beach. And it was during the Second World War, so there were very little gasoline. So people didn't come to the beach because they couldn't get there. But we'd go in the beginning and, and not come back until it was time to go back to school again. We, didn't come, we never came back into the city for the whole summer. And um, one of my mom's uh, sisters was there also with her girls. And so that cousin's on the other side of my family. And we had a troop of about 10. We used to do plays. We used to play games. We, we had gardens, a lot of swimming. and It was just terrific. We had an awful lot of fun. So that's my cousin's story. So I think we're out of time. So I hope that was what you wanted. Yeah, thank you so much. It was much. fun. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. And remember, I'm always available to tell stories. Hey, Brian. Okay. Thank you so much, Uncle Tom.